right, everybody, settle down here. Settle down in the Umbrella Pod Academy. It is time for your Swedish lesson, so I will teach you this term, all right? Swedish meatballs. Meatballs. They're much smaller, though. You don't get that with just the term, but that's the definition. We are going to be talking about the latest episode of Umbrella Academy. Orga for Orga. I'm Alex. Eh, hey, sorry I'm late, Teach, but being late is uh, maybe better, is what I learned from this episode. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with being a little late. I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And as mentioned, we're going to be talking about Oga for Oga, this episode of the Umbrella Academy that is very late in season two. We're still plugging through it, folks. Usual spoiler warning here. If you haven't watched the episode, please turn away because we're only going to recap it briefly and instead talk about some of our favorite moments. Um, But this is a big one because everybody almost makes it back to the present. And when I say the present, I mean 2019, since that's their present. Now, two years in the past. Awesome. I wish we could go back to that year. No way. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be weird when they get back there and then a couple of months later they're going to be uh, quarantined. <laughs> oh, man. It's sort of crazy how maybe they maybe they caused this quarantine oh, yeah. and they need to fix it. This is definitely – I'm going to start calling this the umbrella virus. Oh, boy. Nice. No? Too much? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just throw out a theory straight out the, the jump here. I don't wow. think that – uh, I don't think that um, them being late was a bad thing. I think that maybe Agreed. that stopped them from falling it was a, into some sort of trap. It was a trap. It was a trap. She was. Definitely so what happens here is five is working for the handler, right? Uh, yep. He goes on a mission, kills off the entire board of the commission, so she is able to take control yes. of it. And in exchange, he gets one of those time traveling suitcases that we've seen throughout the show a couple of sure times. Uh, but they only have thirty nine minutes to get the whole band back together and get everybody out of Dallas. Of course, it doesn't work. Uh, but I for, think it's ninety minutes at first. Oh, is it 90 minutes? I think, and then eventually, um, the way time works is it gets down to 39 minutes. No, that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> yeah, it was 90 minutes originally. I, I see it. Oh, okay. Else. All right, fair enough. I thought they were doing a play off the length of time that they had in the episode and were trying to do Ooh. it in real time, but Ooh. I guess not. Uh, so for a variety of reasons, everybody doesn't make it because everybody is off doing their own things in different parts of Dallas. Uh, Ray and Allison get attacked by the Swedes, which is very bad. Allison uses her rumor powers to make one of the Swedes kill his brother, oh, which is pretty horrifying. Great scene. Uh, meanwhile, we got over with Klaus and Ben. Ben has figured out how to possess Klaus and has a very nice time with Jill, the girl he likes, up until Aww. he's interrupted. And then they start to have a big old fight for the body is what goes on down there. Uh, meanwhile, Lila is very concerned about Diego, even if she drugs him. Seems like they bring him into the commission here at the end. Uh, and Luther is being Luther, basically. Yeah. Just sort of wandering mm-hmm. around and doing his stuff. Um, Still continuing with Goofy Luther, which um, yes. I'm a huge fan of. Huge but Luther's fan. sort of trying to sort of trying to solve Elliot's um, murder. And in a reversal, Vanya manages to convince Sissy to leave uh, with Harlan to get out of Dallas to go back to the present with her. Uh, but Carl stops it and gets in the way, and things go pretty bad from there. So that's broad strokes what goes on in the episode. Um, uh, let's talk about some of the individual storylines. Pete, you seem like you're chomping the bit to talk about oh, some yeah. car or a dog I missed or something like that. Well, first off, I'm, I'm chopping the bit to talk about the fanny pack lady. Um, this... This number five, like, showing up at this kind of, like, lodge setting uh, with the uh, candy machine was just amazing. Really just a hell of a way to start. And even just the thing he says offhandedly to the fanny pack lady, uh, Mm -hmm. some say the best luck is to die at the right time. I mean, holy shit, what a fucking line that is. They Uh, say that to me every time I check into a Marriott, though. Yeah, wow. That's their, their slogan. That's their slogan. Yes, <laughs> I would. I would not stay there if somebody said that to me at a place I was checking into. I immediately would turn around and go. Well, it comes place. with a free cookie, so I'm not going to complain too much. <laughs> Marriott hotels. You could die here. It's so comfortable. You could die here. Dot dot dot. And you probably will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the five fight at the beginning was great. Like really fun. Glorious. Just- I mean, you mean him versus the vending machine? Yes, that's 100% what I meant. No. No, nothing else. No, the the five, him killing the commission, uh, was great. It was bloody. It was gross. But 
it was just on a logistical level. It was nice to see him use his powers. Like he took this yeah. lesson he got from Reginald Hargreaves to be like, hey, just do small jumps. Don't try to jump decades at a time. And we finally get to see him really do this in a way that we haven't seen before. Um, so even if they held back on it for a while, it was a fun thing to see. It, it, and it was shot so well. It, it was like just great, like stop start action. Uh, the music was really good. Um, seeing Fishbowl Head get busted yeah. up like that was great. Uh, yeah, and also, you know, you, you get some great music with some great sequences. And I now have a new favorite. Uh, Polk Salad Annie is now going to be on my playlist. A heavy rotation. Uh, what a fun song to put to that gloriously bloody uh, fight sequence with an axe. I uh, could not believe what we were getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just really insane. And then to kind of like, number five, the actor, like just the look on his face afterwards when he was kind of dealing with that and like like the excuses he kind of made, like I'm doing this to save my family and to save the world, like really played well because sometimes when people are dealing with emotional heavy stuff like that it doesn't play as well but i'm just so impressed with this actor and the depth that he's bringing to this role it's really impressive now let me ask you a question then given that he seems to have so much control over his powers this episode versus previous episodes why didn't he just blip to everybody and grab them and take them to the alley yeah um i (laughs) thought that too gotcha Um, gotcha justin Explain well, because I, I really like this episode. This episode um, was uh, was super fun. Everyone was sort of moving in a good direction for the their character and all that. But yeah, it didn't make sense when it opens with him being like just an absolute killer with his powers, jumping around to being like, guys, I really need you to be on time. Time. Yeah. My whole thing, I need you to do it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that, that was a little bit of a bummer, but otherwise, I, I, I like the storyline. Yes, Pete. I also just want to reiterate: we seem to skipped over this part, but in the middle of that uh, kind of fight sequence, the fact that like the fanny pack lady comes at him about the vending machine was mm-hmm. just really, uh, really unbelievably funny. Uh, but also like the stress he has over the vending machine that kind of rolls into this mass murder was such an interesting, crazy idea. I was like, wow, this guy is losing his shit over a fudge bar, but it's not really about the fudge bar. It's about what happens next and uh, kind of really insane way to kind of start this whole thing. That's a great lesson in anger, Pete Wink. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Did you hear? You know what I'm saying? Like, what a great idea to take from Pete Wink. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about, but uh, you know. like just watching someone like be angry and then see what happened, like that the consequences are are pretty wild, huh, Pete Wink? <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Another moment that I really liked with Five later on is when he's trying to get everybody together and he's driving and he and Vanya pass by each other and kind of stop, and then they have this. Superpower face-off, which points to Vanya's control of her powers, much more strong than we've seen in the past, uh, but also five as well. Just they back off of each other. But that was an interesting thing that, again, I don't think we've seen pre- prior to this episode. And also five got lucky because uh, Vanya is more powerful than he is. And he was putting on a show, what felt like. But uh, luckily, she backed down first. Yeah. And I, I feel like it was really establishing the two of them as the most powerful members of the team. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, like, they're the ones, getting to see them head to head, it's like, oh, they're a force to be reckoned with against each other. But maybe what if they combine their forces, they could really do some damage to yeah. perhaps um, the handler here. I also think it's an interesting decision that Five makes at the end to not ditch everybody and go to the future, which I think is partially motivated by the fact that, like, he wants to stop the apocalypse. So if just he and Klaus and Luther leave, it's maybe not going to change that much. But also it does feel like Five, before the season, might have jumped ahead and been like, screw you guys, I'll figure this out later or something. Yeah, yeah. But they feel like, as a family, they actually have a tighter bond this season. I I really hope that they try to bring this family dynamic together because if they really do team up, they could be unbelievable. But uh, hopefully we get to see it someday. I have a feeling they're going to come together. (laughs) Again, I haven't seen ahead, um, but it'd be pretty crazy if they were all like, you know what, let's just live here later. 
Uh, cool. Let's move on to another storyline then. <laughs> uh, we touched on Vanya a little bit, so let's jump over to that uh, because that's a big, dramatic one. Uh, we've talked about Carl as a threat in particular, and Carl. that definitely comes... Carl. 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 Uh, I got very distracted by thinking about Andrew Lincoln saying Carl, and I just got yeah. lost in thought. There okay, you're talking about just Carl me. on the show who is the husband who's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we, no, I don't. We just laid a, we laid out the full Carl Walking Dead soundboard, <laughs> so any, at any time we can pull for our favorite Carl, depending on how we're feeling. Carl? Yep. Carl. Carl. I don't remember Carl. that one. Carl? Carl? <laughs> Put anyway, uh, so Carl, do you think he is a threat now? Like, do you think, uh, or how did you feel about this plot line and the way that it uh, came to bear over the course of the episode? Well, well the heartbreaking part was they were going to get away clean, but then sh- it seemed like she called Carl and the cops. Uh, like, she wasn't completely on board with uh, Vanya's plan. Sissy? Yeah. Because she no. stops when she gets her cash money in the tin, classic move, uh, and then looks up. And then as they're pulling up to the cop car, she says, I made a phone call. You th- she, uh, I don't she, think she called. No, she the dimed, cops. dimed him out. Yeah. She dimed herself out. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know about that, but I do think you can tell that Sissy isn't fully on board. She's scared to yeah. run away from her life. Um, and up until now, Carl's been like sort of a vague threat, but he's just been like sort of a mediocre salesman. In in this episode, you really see him glaring over there, and you can tell he's got bad ideas on his mind. Yeah, which and that whole playing. like I need Vanya. So I can go drink it with my buddy plan. You knew that was bad news right from the get. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Who else should we talk about? Let's talk about Klaus and Ben a little bit because that's a super fun one. Pete, you seem to be freaking out here. Yeah, because they start with such a great scene where we left them off that was like, hey, come on, let me use my powers. And we start with them having kind of a staring contest, a who's going to fall to sleep uh, uh, first type of thing. And this is just such a funny, fantastic moment that I really think like the show is so great at capturing these kind of fun moments. Brought me back to like sleep uh, sleepovers as a kid where we used to always be like, who's going to fall asleep first because you would get your face written on or worse, you know? Uh, so okay. like, yeah. I was I, really curious where that was going at the beginning of the story. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Makes total I sense. Thought, I thought it was really cool. Yeah, when I would have sleepovers, uh, uh, my friend would possess my body. Oh, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um, no, I, I like no this quite a questions. bit, and yeah, I yeah. liked. It was interesting watching, knowing that it's Robert Sheehan playing Ben instead of Justin H. Min playing Ben. Um, uh, just good performance, and it was very clear, uh, even if visually it was strange to watch at the same time. It was fun to see Ben, like, just yeah. in general, because we haven't really seen him do anything. And he's just sort of sitting sourly off to the side through most of the, the series so far. And in this, you realize he's just like this little kid who's like just sort of an innocent little pure-hearted guy who likes his girlfriend in dirt. He also likes dirt. Who likes to rip grapefruits in half? Is that what he did? Yeah. He, yeah, and threw one. Uh, didn't he throw it? Um, the, was yeah, it or an orange? Well, he thought, a, I think they thought, he thought it was an orange, and then when he bit into it, he was like, oh, this is gro- grapefruit, and threw it, which was a really fun discovery. Can you do that, though? Is that an actual thing that people could do? Is there some sort of, like, life hack where you could just rip a grapefruit in half very easily? What are you talking about? Yeah, you yeah. can rip a grapefruit. Really? I, it's not technically a life hack if you just use your hands, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. You're just ripping it. Is it a life hack? To... Whenever I have a grapefruit, I have to cut it in half. I didn't know that you could just, like, tear it oh, in no. half. I, I always peel the grapefruit. Sure, you I peel ha- it. There's a difference between peeling it and ripping it clean in half. Just depends on how you're feeling that morning. Yeah, I need my grapefruit. GF. Right. I, I got to get my GF. You're fucking incredible no, no. hulks on this podcast, I guess. No, grapefruits are disgusting. I don't fuck with that shit. Uh, uh, but you, no, you yes. put a little cottage cheese on it, you got yourself a health platter. 
Oh, let me let, let me guess, Alex. You probably like peel your banana instead of squeezing it and then catching the inside out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the real person. Yeah. Didn't you watch cartoons? Don't you know how to eat things? How do you How do you get into a can of spinach? Yeah. <laughs> With a can opener? Or do you bean dad? <laughs> Six hours. I'm still on it. I'll tell you what. That's going to be a very current reference when we eventually put no out this one episode. Will, no, no one will even remember what that is. Yeah. Oh, we're on uh, day five of the America Wars. All oh, right, being dad, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they said that. Uh, but I did think the uh, Dirt Angels was adorable. That was really fun. Oh, super cute. Yes. Whole thing was super cute. Really like that storyline. Also, not usually a big fan of gross stuff, but Klaus and Ben fighting their way into the alleyway and then just the dormous vomit across the alley. Oh. Very funny. Oh, very funny. Um, yeah, I, the the way that they did both performance wise um, with Klaus and Ben, and the, graphically having him pop keep popping out, I thought was really cool. Yeah, that was great. Uh, let's move on to another pair that I thought was really fun this episode: Diego and Luther. Yes, what a what a bunch of dubbies! <laughs> Just, oh my god, those yes. two being left alone together was hysterical. They're like threat. Threatening an old lady on the phone, like, I will fight you and I will kill you. And then number five comes in and is like, hey, dumbasses. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, it's also funny, like, they're the Batman and Superman analogs, <laughs> and they're just absolute goobers the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, the fact that one of the reasons why I think five's like, I'm not leaving with Luther and Barfy Klaus. <laughs> Luther sucks. Barfy Klaus. Uh, uh, it's just such a hilariously pointedly dumb assumption that they made that somebody named Okafroga came in and wrote <laughs> their name in blood on the floor. Yeah. Uh, just fun. Just a fun bit. Yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> but now, now, do you guys think, um, like, will they be redeemed at the end of the season? Like, will they get they've smarter? Done nothing good. Well, will they have a heroic moment? Like, it feels like so much of this season is pinned on Five, Vanya, Allison really coming into their own and being the heroes who step up, do the right thing, while Luther and Diego are like, oh, I like this girl, but she's mean. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, think. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just no, going to no. say, I think that, like, there is, because Diego might not be the smartest, he is, he might be a really good operative. And, you know, there is hope for him uh, with Lila, maybe getting getting some kind of like doing the right thing. But he is messed up. I got to say, though, Diego and Ben, that was really touching and very nice. Like that whole like prove it's you moment yeah. was really beautiful. Yeah, I think there's enough emotionally going on there with both of those characters. We also get a really good scene with Luther and Allison uh, talking about how there's yeah. no time to leave that I thought was sweet and sad. So there's different notes there. Like they're dumb lugs with each other, but they are capable of emotion. They're capable of connecting with other people at a real level beyond comedy. Uh, and uh, to the point you were making earlier, Justin, I think that's one of the things that I really liked about this episode is there's a lot of different modes that it plays in here, including uh, comedy, drama, action, etc. cetera, uh, which is fun. The, it, it's, yep. it's very documentary. Greasy. The, uh, yep. uh, the Luther line, like women, am I right? Was just such a fun, like encapsulating of like who Luther is, like this kind of oh, I, I, just such such great lines, and, and they they're having a lot so much more fun with the characters. I feel this season. Yeah, and they're, even though they're they're being such goobers, they are super likable, and you really still pulling for them. You really feel alongside them because that, that's what I think they really are. Is their emotions are just on their sleeves, which you haven't seen with them in the in the first season really in a positive way, and is unexpected for the archetype their superhero archetypes so it is it does really work and then so even when you see diego s- stupidly drink the drug oh, yeah. booze oh, from lila and you're like of course that's a drug <laughs> yeah. and oh, he even God. realizes just just fun <laughs> yeah uh what else did we miss anybody i don't know that we've uh i feel like well, we have to talk about the swedes um, yes so the Swedes that have the uh, Ogafroga is basically an eye for an eye. 
Um, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then you get the Swedes attack Allison with uh, go through the pretense of having a vacuum cleaner to sell them, but then instantly <laughs> get into a fight. Um, uh, which I thought this this was great, and the way she gets him in the eye with the vacuum cleaner top, eye for an eye, and then oh, yeah. horrifyingly, you see him kill his brother, even though he his face doesn't want to be oh. doing it, and he's doing it just really wild. These are yeah. these are good villains and good thugs. Uh, I know this is going to create a huge controversial argument, but Hazel and Cha Cha in the first season really felt disconnected from the whole show. Here, they feel like they are even what? with the tone of everything that's going on. Uh, they uh, play into it, and I was surprised how emotionally involved I got into the Swedes, particularly uh, at the end of this episode. First of all, go yeah. fuck yourself with a statement like that. You put respect on um, Mary J. Blige's fucking character, all right? You do not disrespect like that. They were a really fun and ahead of where the season should be. You don't put that blame on them. Those were two very fun, very cool characters that were over the top. And then the Swedes kind of really fit the goofiness of the show in season two. But that's not their fault, okay? They were cast for the scene that they were cast, and they were a fucking great part of the show. I like the Swedes better, too. (laughs) Pieces of shit. Rebuttal. Both of you, both of you, <laughs> you couldn't have liked the Swedes unless you had fucking those two before. You didn't know what you had till it was gone. I just to add no, uh, on, I just wanted to say. Uh, also, I don't like Mary J. Blige's music. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, who are you? Wow. <laughs> That's not true. She she's good. She's great. Most of her music Thank is you. in great. character. Jesus yeah. Christ. Just wanted to wind you up a little bit. Uh, we're your own personal candy bars stuck in the machine, Pete. That's what's going on here. Yeah. In case you didn't catch that earlier, wink. Oh, wink. Boy. Stop winking wink. at me. Stop. Wink. Uh, any other moments we want to call out from the episode? Anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Uh, I'm very uh, happy that Vanya hasn't like lost it and gone into that monster she was in the first season. It's nice to see Vanya have a little bit more agency over herself and her powers. Um, the, the getting pulled over by the cops thing was just so fucking like, oh shit, how the fuck are you going to do this? Um, but it was this classic thing. Like as soon as the handler was like, yeah, all you got to do is get your family in 90 minutes. And I was just like, no way. There's no way you can herd all of those very individualized people to follow you. Number five, you are not good at getting people on your side. Um, so I'm glad that they weren't miraculously able to kind of uh, all come together like that. Yeah, um, I'm, and I'm curious, like I said this earlier, but I do think that they dodged maybe a trap that the handler had set for them um, because she seems like she's she has a plan and it's going well. Um, and in the last few episodes, I think we're going to see her really take come into her own. And I do think Vanya will come close to the edge of losing it again and then pull it back and help them save the day. That's a prediction. Oh, oh one thing I, uh, I mentioned on a prior podcast accidentally, the use of the Backstreet song where the kind of lyrics came before the song and then the action was just, I mean, I, I, we mentioned this before, but man, the music and fighting sequences that they put together, just alone it's worth it for the show. You could just fast forward into the fun fight scenes, have yourself a time. And the setup yeah, of that, that was fun as well, with Klaus doing the lyrics from everybody and then that going directly <laughs> into that fight scene. It was very enjoyable. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, very good. Of course you um, know the And lyrics. one other bit of poetry that um, Klaus slash Ben said right before that was, <clears throat> bless the water, bless the air, bless the sex wing for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I did uh, love the kind of Diego like moment where even though he's not the smartest, like the earnesty in which he says, do you know how hard it is to trust people? Delilah, like that was fucking heartbreaking, man. Absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. Good stuff all around. Uh, before we wrap up here, who gets top marks this episode? Pete, who gets top Ooh, marks? This is tough. Tough There's call a, for this Pete. This is tough. This is tough. I got to. 
I'm going to have to go with number five. Uh, that, mm. those, that first Oof. fight sequence was just absolutely... Can't believe, can't believe you went with number five. Wow. Well, I'm sorry. It was glorious. Uh, I kind of wanted to go with Diego as well, but I'm, gonna, I'm keeping it five. It's just especially sad because you didn't pick um, the person I'm selecting, who you I thought you liked, but I guess you just don't give a shit. Ben. Ben the ghost man really came into his own this time and you yeah. left him you treated him like a ghost you ghosted him oh, no. No. at a time when he was really he really needed you Pete wink oh, and you weren't there right. but Ben was great in this episode it was great to see him um see actually see his personality for maybe the first time and um the performance um by Klaus as Ben was excellent yeah really great yeah, I mean, on that note, I'm going to go with Klaus in this episode, uh, just because great, great no character. No surprise. Classic you're, television character. You're does Klaus some great stuff. all day, every day. Klaus all day, every day. I don't even know what he did this episode, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if I could pick just sort of my favorite for the season uh, across of it, it's an early pick, but I'm going to say with the absence of Hazel and Cha-Cha has really been my favorite Ooh, character. Fuck you, man. You're a fucking <laughs> asshole. That is not true. If you'd like to support our show, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Crowdcast on YouTube. Come hang out. We'll chat with you about Hazel or Cha Cha or whatever you want to talk yeah! about. It's all good. iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe and listen to the show at Podcademy on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, keep ripping those grapefruits in half, please. Wink. <laughs>